All right, everybody, welcome back to what will end up being the final part of this Pro Challenge playthrough for Dragon View. And when we left off, we were once again in the town of Kazdra, and we need to make our way toward level three. And in order to do that, we need to go into the archway that was barring our way to the snow field. But before we do that, there are a few loose ends I want to tie up here, which will make us more well-equipped to handle the third area and the third dungeon for that matter. So the first thing I want to worry about is getting our fire ring fully powered and charged because that's going to be key to defeating this third and final boss quickly and hopefully as painlessly as possible. So you're going to head southwest out of the town of Kazdra, almost immediately southwest. And you can enter this mini fire cave. There are no enemies in here, thankfully. You just have to go all the way over this way, dodge the flames, jump the flames. That's really all there is to it. Like I said, no enemies. Go up in here, and then you're going to encounter what I will call this fire wizard or fire mage. And after a lot of loose lips and talking, he will upgrade your fire ring to level two. And that's going to be mainly used against the boss of the third dungeon here. Now, you could use it against enemies that you're going to find in the third area. But for the time being, definitely get it done and out of the way because, trust me, you will want to have it and it will be crucial and key to beating that third boss without going into too much pain and suffering. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and back out of here. I can almost always never get out of this cave without taking a hit and this is no exception. Uh, yeah, even with a perfect jump, I don't know why. Anyway, we're going to continue on moving out of here, not a whole lot to see. So once we get out of this little fire tree stump, as I'll call it, we're going to make our way to an area where we were previously. If you remember where we got the lightning ring, it was in between the Kazdra region and the lake cave, or maybe a little bit further east of that. But we're going to head back over that way, because there's a couple things toward that direction. And even further down to the south, we're going to increase our magic capacity. So that's exactly where we're going. We're going to bypass and completely walk past the fire cave area, level 2. And then that's when we're going to make our move into the areas which have all the information that I just talked about previously. So this is the Lake Cave region. We're going to head over this way and continue heading down south towards what is a desert area. So just stick with me here. As we move into the Lake Cave area, I will tell you there is another technique that you can give for your sword. We'll just call it sword tech. If you pick it up and you hit X, it's going to deal significantly more damage than a regular sword strike would. The problem with that is that the sword tech will actually deplete your health. And it's for that reason that I actually don't recommend, and it's not really <laughs> the end of the world if you don't get it. In fact, I think in this run I don't get it. But just, just to show you where it is, it is a little bit southeast of the lake cave area. And once again, if you don't get it, no big deal. Just to show you, if you do end up finding it, it's going to be in a similar area as the fire ring. It'll be in a little tree stump. Yeah, go figure that one out. You go in a tree stump to find a sword technique or a fire ring. Hey, I don't make the game. It's just a fantasy. Anyway, uh, what you're going to do from here is you're looking to find this desert area. Now, one thing you need to notice is that there will be a bridge that crosses a river. And eventually, you're going to cross that bridge, and that will lead you straight over into this desert. And we're going to continue heading south. We're not quite down there yet. At this point, we're just fooling around looking for the sword tech. And unfortunately, we're not going to find it, so we're just going to skip past this. Okay, we're finally done with that fiasco here. We've decided to move on to the desert area, and we're going to be heading straight east after we've gone south. And much like with the fire cave area region, you'll notice how the arena and the texture in the background is going to start turning a different color, and the music is going to change to a much more wild western theme, which is kind of ironic because we're heading east. So figure that one out, but anyway, just the game. Now we're going to be sticking along the southern wall, which is on the right in this case, and eventually, if you avoid all the enemy encounters, by the way, don't encounter any enemies here because they will wipe you very, very quickly. Stick along the right-hand side wall and eventually a cave will pop up. That's the one you want to go into and it is aptly called the Desert Cave. And when you go in here, you're not going to see a whole lot. Once the screen decides to continue loading here, this is the Desert Cave. You're just going to walk straight back through this hole and there's going to be a statue. Just move right on past it. You can't even push it. You can come back here eventually and push it out of the way, but for right now, just move over to the right-hand passage and you're going to see... What's this? Another Persia boss? Yes, it is. Believe it or not, a huge scorpion, but considering how overpowered we are for this stupid thing, we leveled up and he didn't, it is the easiest joke of a quote-unquote boss that you're ever going to see. 
And what's the reward? A very, very nice one. It is an upgrade to your MP capacity. So check this out. We had four. Now we have six stars, which is very, very nice considering the amount of damage and the use that these rings will be getting. Trust me, you absolutely want to have as much MP as possible, particularly for the third area boss and dungeon. Now we start backing out of here. You could go to the left, but again, it is another beginner's trap designed to trick you and utterly destroy you, much like the earlier lake cave region, I believe. So just get what you need, get the star back out of there and continue on your merry way. Now, what we're gonna do from this point is we're going to backtrack to the Khazdra Lake Cave area region, and there's one more sub area we need to visit here. And truthfully, you don't have to do this. This is just in case you wanna have another let's just say option for magic here. Remember how earlier we got the lightning ring? Well, now we're gonna head to an area that will upgrade the lightning ring to level two. Also, if you've killed enough enemies, there is an option to give you an upgraded boost to your health, I believe. In my case, I haven't done enough of it, so you're not gonna see it. We're not gonna get the merits and benefits of it. But basically, keep backtracking to the lake cave area and then continue to head due north. You'll be in a new area that looks kind of like a swamp region. So we're going to go ahead and skip, and once we get there, we will chime back in. Okay, and if you've been following along, you kind of have an idea of where we're at right now. And as we come up, we see that the screen and the scenery and the music all change to a more dark, eerie, ominous setting here. We are now in the swamp region. Now, once again, this is entirely optional. You don't have to do this, but there are two things that you may want to consider. One of them, of course, is the lightning ring upgrade, and that's going to be located. It's kind of difficult to tell and say exactly, but it's right out in the top central section of the swamp. If you have a guide pulled up and you can look at the exact location, it'll certainly help you. But the other thing you want to look out for is a cave on the left-hand side wall. And when you go in there, there is a man inside who will give you an upgrade to your heart, I believe, your health, I should say, if you've killed at least 100 enemies throughout the course of the game up to this point. And unfortunately, I have not done that. I know I haven't done it, so I'm just going to bypass and skip it. By the way, do not fight any random enemy encounters here in the swamp at this level. You will get annihilated. Don't do it. Yeah, even with the level 2 fire ring, it's a very hard fight. So just ignore it if you can. I am going to look around for the lightning ring upgrade, but once again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. So for the sake of that and knowing that, I'm just going to totally skip this until we have everything that we need, and then we will proceed onward with the rest of this playthrough. All right, and for those of you who are following along, we did manage to find this ugly looking tree stump that has the lightning ring upgrade. So if you find it, go eight, go down inside and right down the steps, you're gonna find this lightning wizard as he is known, and you're going to receive the upgrade to your lightning ring. So again, just for the sake of showing you that it is here, we did get it once again for the third or fourth time. This is completely optional. You don't have to do this. But where this may come in handy is taking out enemies that fly, because sometimes, if you don't want to use the sword, this could be the best option outside of the Hausa weapon. So that's the main reason you may want to get this. Beyond that, we're good to go. So we're going to continue to skip, and I believe we have everything we need at this point. So right now, we are just going to backtrack to the town of Khazdra, and finally, we are going to proceed to the snow fields. Let's go ahead and backtrack some more. All right, and we are once again back at the town of Khazdra. You think we'd be done with this town by now? Nope, this is a pretty much a focal point for this playthrough and for this game, especially in the early going. So now we're headed to the snowfield, right? So in order to get there, we need to head to the back region area of the town, and we're gonna head past this, and it's gonna be in this building right over here, I believe. Yes, it is. All right, go straight through the archway. He will no longer be blocking our path, just to prove it. Yes, we have the Ring of Fire. We are all set to go. All right, there is a portal. You're going to step right onto it, and you will be instantly dematerialized and rematerialized on a warp field, which will take you right into the snow area. And I gotta say, this is one of my personal favorite areas, not to mention soundtracks in the entire game here. I always love good soundtracks when it comes to snow and cold environments and things like that. 
kind of reminds me a little bit of Mystical Ninja on N64, that kind of uh, music right there. All right, so as you can see, we're clearly in the snow field, and there's a couple things we want to do before we go into the snow fortress. And yes, we will get there eventually. We could probably go there. Not now, but we do need to get there soon enough. Now, there's one thing right in front of us. There is a cave, and why not? Let's go into it. And I will tell you, there is something very good in this cave. What exactly is it? Someone to talk to. Two landslide. What could that possibly mean? Well, it says Wandering Healer. I will tell you right now, this is not the thing you're going for. It's basically like going to Khazra or a town like Rises, Hujia, except you're paying this person to heal you. Why would I do that when I could go right back to Khazra for free? You know, ridiculous. All right, now we're going to go down the basement here. And ooh, check this out. That's why we showed up. A free HP capacity increase. Yes. Now, you might be tempted to go up and heal for 50 Jade. Don't do it. Jade is hard enough to get in this game as it is. Don't waste 50 on him. So that's really all you need at this point. Go ahead and backtrack out of here. And that's the first thing done and out of the way. And you certainly want to have extra HP since we're this close to finishing the pro level challenge. We just have to get to the snow fortress right now. So that's out of the way. Now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to start to head up north and eventually over to the east. And there is another pickup we want to worry about getting here. So if we pull up our map or not. <laughs> I always forget what I did in this section here. We definitely do want to head up north. There are a couple things here. One of them is a chest game, which will give you an increase on something, such as bombs, potions, and things like that. That's optional. You don't have to do that, but there is also something else you're going to go into. There's another cave. If you head up to the top left, I believe, that's where the Snow Fortress Level 3 is, along with the boss. We're going to save that for the end. We don't want to do that until we're absolutely sure that we are ready to go with everything here. I will tell you, out of the shoot, you do want to be at at least level 15, preferably, before you go in and take on that fortress and the boss. By the way, this right here is a crucial upgrade. Remember that Halza boomerang weapon we picked up way back at the start? Well, this is an upgrade to the energy here, and at this point in the game, you're going to absolutely want to prefer to use this weapon over the sword. I'm kidding you not. This is the boomerang, obviously, and with the high power increase, it's already stronger than the sword as it is, but now at level 2, by the way, take note of this, you can slide on the ice, and that could come into play in the snow fortress. This is going to be crucial. Take a look at this. 78. Yeah, it is actually higher than the sword right now, so it will be your weapon of choice. Just to remind you what it does. It is an amazing weapon, and it will come in handy because you will have some flying enemies to deal with that may go out of your range. So that's crucial. You do want to have that, especially against the boss. But we're not quite ready just yet. Now there's one more upgrade we want to pick up here, and this is one that you definitely want, and you'll see why. Head over here. This is optional. This is the chest game here. You could do it to get a chance at potions, bombs, you know, things like that. You're not going to get a health or a magic increase, but you do have a chance at getting something if you want to trade in 10 fruit. Now here's the problem. We don't have 10 fruit. Remember I told you way back in part one with those trees that dropped all the fruit? Had we actually gotten enough, we could trade them in for a chance to get some of those things. So hint, hint. I would suggest doing that. Now, fortunately, I feel pretty confident in my skills. I'm not too broken up over the fact that I can't get a chance at potions when I can just go back to Khazra and get them for free. Well, not free, but you know what I mean. Anyway, that's the chess game. That is completely optional. You don't have to do that. Now, this section over here, again, also optional, but it is something you do want to encounter. It's far over to the east-northeast. One more little cave, and then we will go into the ice fortress here. So let's go into this triangle corridor. And what do we have in here? Why is this so important? Well, I will show you. Well, first of all, you're in the snow field, and you're going to have a chance to test your brand new house of level 2 weapon here. So look at this. These are brand new enemies we haven't seen before, and we accidentally backed out of there. And they are doing some damage here. We're at level 13, and we're starting to feel the pain, right? Just like Brock Lesnar. So we're going to go ahead and hit him as hard as we can. Make sure they will counterattack you. By the way, that fire ring, that is a great weapon to test out and try here. So use the Hausa, get a feel for it, or use the fire ring, bust them up. By the way, those are spikes, and you can slide into them, and they will hurt you. Be very cautious of that. Now here's a chest right here. This is the main reason we came in. An MP capacity star upgrade. Now check this out. We have 10, I believe, no, 8. We have 8 stars right now with a chance to get more in the next fortress. Had we not gone to the desert, we'd only have 6 right now. So, yes, that is absolutely amazing. We will want as much magic as we can get in that third fortress, especially against the boss. So, I can tell you that we are set at this point. 
with everything that I care to get. The only thing that we really need to worry about right now is getting ourselves to level 15 before entering, or at least as soon as we do enter, get ourselves up there. This is a case where you can just wander around and try to kill some of these enemies outside in the snowy area and just kind of listen to the cool music. Totally up to you how you do it. Just make sure that you get yourself preferably to level 15 before you feel comfortable tackling that third fortress. Now, the good news is that we are very close to the level 3 entrance, and here it is, right over here to the right. So, I'm going to take the chance of just going right in there, because, again, after having watched some of the walkthroughs online, I have a pretty good idea of what's up ahead. I don't recommend going in here at level 13, but I'm going to take some chances here. I know I have some potions, I got a little bit of MP magic stars. Now, here we are. We are officially in the Ice Fortress. A bit of a maze, and it can be a little bit tricky if you don't know what's going on here and who does the first time they're playing. You're going to head off left. Now, you're going to use your fire ring, and it's going to melt the ice. Makes sense, right? You will be making use of that uh, fire ring right there. Ooh, now remember these things here. Had you been back in the lake cave and you were an idiot and went past where you should have gotten that one pickup I told you not to go into, you probably ran into one of those things and got yourself killed and had to restart. Well, now you can take those things out with the Hauza level 2. So... Now that we know what those are, we've got a few enemies to kill and wipe out, and we're just going to do a little bit of backtracking, go forward and backward, forward and backward, killing these enemies here. We're pretty close to level 14, and we're almost ready to take on the boss at level 15 or 16. A lot of people will say go higher than that. I honestly think level 15 is enough, as long as you have enough MP and magic to deal with that boss, and you'll see what I'm talking about once we're ready. So once you're at level, at least level 14, if not 15, go up. You're going to have another flying troll enemy here. Go ahead and take it out with the Halza weapon. I really wouldn't chance using the sword right here because it's hard enough to hit those things until they hit you. You can get a counter. We're getting a lot of MP right now. You can see why those MP upgrades are crucial right now. So moving up to the third floor of the fortress, it's really a lot of exploration here. Take your time. You know, there's no time limit, obviously, in this game. Continue to take these things out. Now you're going to see some more ice pillars here. We already know what that means, right? Go ahead and use your firing to bust through them. And there's a reason you want to bust through them. It's not because you're looking to waste your magic. But most importantly, those poles are guarding holes that will lead you to further sections in the dungeon that you were unable to get to normally. And of course, the only way you can get there with the fire ring, burn them down. Fortunately, it only takes one blast with the ring to dissolve them. But as you can see, there are in this case, one, two, three, four, five poles. And you don't have to dissolve all of them, but certainly a couple blasts will be needed. So obviously, if you don't have enough stars, go ahead and kill some enemies and earn some. As you're going to see right about here, if you take some of these down, there is a hole there. Now, unfortunately, as I was playing this level, I didn't realize that until much later. I spent a lot of time wasted, just fooling around, looking for other ways to progress through hidden doors. So for the time being, as you can see, we're just wasting time. So bear with me through the skip, and we will see you when we are ready to stop backtracking and go through the holes like we were supposed to do. Okay, we've come out of Ice Hyperdrive here, and we finally figured out what to do. So we're going to use our fire ring to burn down these stupid poles and go down the holes. Now, there are a couple you can burn down here. I believe this one will drop down to an area with hearts in pots that you can get. And yes, sure enough, here it is. Now, bear in mind with these pots, you will not be able to take them out with the Halza. You'll have to switch over to your normal sword, and then you can take out whatever is in them. So in this case, a couple of them have hearts, a couple of them have stars, and you'll certainly want those stars given that you no doubt used a couple shots of your fire ring to get to this room. Now, when you're done with that, it doesn't matter which hole you drop down. Just go down one of them, kill the enemies. And bear in mind as you're doing this and as you're progressing through everything in this fortress, you ideally want to be at at least level 15 to comfortably take out the boss. Could you do it at 14? Yes, you could, but you're going to have a lot more sanity and you'll feel a lot more safe and secure and peace of mind knowing that you're level 15. Preferably beyond that if you want to waste time leveling even further, but certainly level 15. So right about now, we're just wasting time going back and forth, killing enemies to get to level 15. We're only going to need, looking at the experience bar, probably maybe two more trips back and forward here to get what we need. And then we're ready to face the level 3 boss. And I will tell you right up front, the level 3 boss, I wouldn't say it's difficult per se, but the way and manner in which you have to fight it is different from the first two bosses. So keep that in mind. So we've only got one more wave, let's just say, of going back and forth killing enemies here. Let's see if this does it. I believe it will. One more kill will take it out and get us to level 15. There it is. All right. 
We are in good shape to progress and finally take on this Ice Fortress boss, so let's continue up here. And this fire ring is going to come in handy very much for progressing and getting to the boss room. So we're going to head all the way up to the third floor once again. And we're going to move over to these rooms with the ice pillars here. And you already know what we need to do to progress even further. So let's just go ahead and do it. Now, this room, we've already dropped down in that hole. There's nothing to see there. We've already been down there. So let's not waste time and drop down it again. Let's just go back the way that we came. Now I will say, we're gonna head over to the far right if we remember where we're going. Here we are, we have a ice pillar again. We're gonna melt it right here, drop down in the hole, and that's exactly where we wanna be. Now, don't go down that hole on the left, that's gonna take you back where you went from. Yeah, you can clearly see, just to show you what happens. If you need to level some more, you can certainly do that. Clearly, as I said, when I went through this dungeon the first time, I did not know where I was going. This is essentially a blind playthrough for me, much like Metroid 2. The only difference is that I have a map handy with me, and don't ask me why I wasn't using it when I was playing this dungeon here. But alas, hindsight is 2020. Now that we definitely know where we're going, let's go ahead and progress back up to level 3 here, and over to the room which has the ice pillars, and go forward onward, and get to the third level boss here. So I think we know exactly where we're going now. Go all the way back up, all the way over and down to the right, and sure enough, we should be where we need to be. Let's go ahead and do it. There we go. Now, this is always confusing to me. Why would I see that there's a hole right there and not go down it? I don't know. But anyway, now we know it's there. We go down, and there was that unbreakable ice pillar right there. So now we go through it, and this is where you can just spend time killing enemies here if necessary. And really, the only thing you should be doing is, number one, make sure your health is full. Ideally, make sure that your MP and your stars are as full as possible also. Now, we got a few more enemies to kill. You can kill them if you want to. Obviously, I feel very good at level 15. So let's just take a moment or two to kill these enemies here. Hopefully get another star or two. And we got one. That's pretty good. We're almost at full MP, so I will take what I can get. Go up the steps. I think we have one more room to progress past after we get through these enemies. Now, this room is kind of annoying. You're going to have these headless spear horsemen <laughs> things. And then you have these ice guardians, which will dash at you. And the problem is, as I'm sure you've probably seen, there was a room like this back at the start, also in another cave on the overworld. There are spikes on the walls, and you can inadvertently fall and dash into them if you're not paying attention because of the ice on the ground. And you're going to have one more major room here. This is right before the boss. I remember this room. So take out this Ice Guardian. Not too difficult if you just hit counter and get out of the way, much like the bosses beforehand. Now, here we are. This is the room right before the boss. We walk in. There is a eerie glacial ghost eye that appears and causes an earthquake avalanche. It's going to shatter the ground beneath us. And down we go. And what in the world is this thing? Well, I'll tell you what it is. This is called the Glacial Horror, and it certainly looks a little horrifying, right? Now, we made pretty short work of this just as we got down here. The key right out of the chute is to use your fire ring immediately and drain its health to 50% or as close to it as possible. Very, very simple. Once that's done, the fight is going to get a little bit more difficult. You're going to see an eye starts to float around, and that is the main source of damage you're going to be inflicting upon here. Just continue to use your Hausa or your sword, whatever weapon you choose. Don't use any of your rings unless you want to try using the lightning ring. That might be beneficial if you can get it to hold still. But even then, you're probably going to be drained of magic at this point. So if you have a crystal, go ahead and use it. If not, whatever. Make sure you have a potion handy. You certainly don't want to die at this point because this is the final part of the pro challenge. So beyond that, take note that whenever the big ice monster opens his eyes like that, he's going to charge at you. So make sure you are not on the same plane as him when he is ready to start dashing. He will not move in a diagonal pattern. He'll just move straight across typically. So you don't have to worry too much. In fact, you could just stand right in front of or behind him when he opens his eyes up and you've got nothing to worry about. So I would say the Hausa Boomerang is definitely the safer of the two main primary weapon options when you're trying to attack the eye here. As I said, if you don't want to do that, use the lightning ring, but guess what? We're good to go. We took out the final boss here as far as this challenge is concerned. And I know technically we're not done with the ice dungeon yet, but we took out the boss early because we were able to do so. So technically, we are done with this challenge. The game is very fun though. I would encourage you to keep on playing and go all the way through to the end. This is one of my favorite games I've recently discovered on the Super NES. Definitely continue to play it, give it a shot. But for this challenge, we're done. We're good to go. Cross 165 off the list. Thanks much, guys. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.